welcome you to this institution. Phil, most welcome to Cooperative University College of Kenya. Right? But the idea is this. Do we give up? All right? Do we give up our way of life because somebody has come in and messed it? That is the big question. Do we give up our way of, if, if the cooperative is the way we want to do our business, do we stop doing business that way because we, somebody came in and messed it? But we are discouraged. You're discouraged, yes. The, the question I'll ask is, who is the problem? The first problem is the member. <laughs> the problem is the member. Why? Because the member is the one who has elected this person. <laughs> <laughs> who is supposed to know who is supposed to know him better? Welcome to Cooperative University College of Kenya. We love visitors and we like welcoming visitors and sharing with them and more so and more so those who are from the cooperative movement and those who are also involved in other agricultural activities. Something brief, Kenya and Rwanda, I think we are friendly nations and we share quite a lot in common. At the moment, this institution has a memorandum of understanding with the Rwanda Cooperative Agency with the view of sharing experiences to promote cooperatives in the two countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I think at that juncture it's important that we do some introductions and I would like to start my name is Edward Tien, currently Deputy Director of Academic Affairs of this institution. Mr. Dismas Sorodi, the coordinator of our short tailored programs. I'm also happy to acknowledge that he is the coordinator of the training program that we are mounting, we are mounting for the Rwanda Cooperative uh, Agents Officers. Thank you. But uh, let me say this, uh, the role of the, the college. And uh, it's good, I, I think we probably are thinking along the same line because the, those two questions are very closely related. The, the, the role of the college and the, the secret, what you are calling a secret behind the success, there is no secret, right? So, what is the role of the college? The, the college, right from the time it started, and uh, it's way back, uh, we don't have said, it's way back as early as 1952, there was, there was a school called the East African School of Cooperation, which covered Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. That was the East African School of Cooperation. Now, thereafter, of course, each of the countries where they are aware and establish their own training institutions. This, this college was started here through a collaboration 
uh, between the Kenya government and the Nordic countries, Norway, Denmark, Sweden. Those are the countries that came together to support the Kenya government to put up this institution in 1971. Why? And that is the secret, right? Why? There, there lies the secret. When principally to train people in the area of cooperatives. <clears throat> and not just training people, to train those government officers that would go to work in the cooperative world, in the cooperative sector. So that is the secret, right? That is the secret. That first, there is an institution that trains co people in what? In cooperatives. So that when you, the moment you get out of there, you, are, you understand what a cooperative is. And I'll tell you, I have worked in cooperatives the rest of my life, right? I have done promotion of cooperatives. I was trained in cooperatives. I worked in promotion of cooperatives. I am now training others in cooperatives. Right? So if you wanted the secret, there is the secret. <laughs> First of all, get the person, get the people to understand and appreciate what is a cooperative. Right? If, if you don't understand it, if you don't leave its values, you cannot keep telling people about what? About cooperatives. Okay? So, the, the, Kenya, the secret then is a deliberate, deliberate action, right? By the Kenya government then. I, 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 I wish we had time, I would have given you the historical perspective of cooperatives now both in Kenya and elsewhere, if we had time. But the government, the Kenya government, deliberately, right, took certain steps to promote cooperatives. And to do that, the government established a training institution where it trained its own officers that would go out there and do what? And promote cooperatives. So this college was first and foremost established to train who? Government officers, all right, in cooperatives. And so apart from then training government officers would not be enough, then the government took the next step, which was to train those working in the cooperative societies. So that you can now say you are a true cooperator, you are a trained cooperator, you are going to work in a cooperative. You have been trained. The person who is supporting the cooperative from the government side is a trained what? Is a trained cooperator. So these people can actually now promote what? Cooperatives. So if that is a secret, <laughs> now, um, let me tell you this. There is uh, cooperatives and people are one and the same. Okay? And where you have people, you must expect certain things. Mm. Right? Mm. You must expect certain things. So, it is, not, it is not something that has not happened in Kenya. And it is not something that is not happening, even today, as we talk, right? But the idea is this. Do we give up, right? Do we give up our way of life because somebody has come in and messed it? That is the big question. Do we give up our way of, if, if the cooperative is the way we want to do our business, do we stop doing business that way because we, somebody came in and messed it? But we are discouraged. You are discouraged, yes. The, the question I'll ask is, who is the problem? The first problem is the member. 
The problem is the member. Why? Because the member is the one who has elected this person. <laughs> <laughs> who is supposed to know who is supposed to know him better? It is the you see, we are here, we are 30, we are now about 40, all right? We form a cooperative. What is the first thing? The first thing is that we know one another way, isn't it? Otherwise, do we just go and work with the people we don't know? We, are, we belong to the same village, we belong to the same business, we are doing something that we have in common, we know one another way. So when it comes to first step, when it comes to election, right? When it comes to election, who elects the member? What should this member do? Ensure that he or she does not elect X who has a problem. You even know the person has a problem, but you will still elect him to run your corporate. And then what happens? That's what. What happens? You elect him there, you will use the same money to stay there. Mm. Now, that is what. Those things happen. They have happened in Kenya. They still happen in Kenya. Even with the success that we are talking about of cooperatives in Kenya, those problems are still there. They are part of doing business. You should never, members, yes, they are, they are discouraged, right? Members will get discouraged, but they should never give up. That's why. Two, government, government needs to come up with a legislation, a law, right? A law that puts you as a cooperative leader on notice, right? I, I sit, I, 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 am a, I am a cooperative leader myself, right? Because I sit in the board of uh, one of our cooperative societies here. But what is it, what is it that tells me there? What is the caution? What, what, uh, what, what restricts me, what stops me from putting my hand in that pot, there must be something. And government needs to look at the law and not just put the law there, but also do what? Enforce that law. So that if I am a, a board, if I have been elected to run that cooperative society, and while I am there, I get involved in taking away from the common pot the first step is not to take me to jail. Mm -hmm. That should be uh, that is that is my thinking. Mm -hmm. That should not be the first step. The first step is to make me pay back. Right? Mm -hmm. To make me pay back to the cooperative what I have taken away from it. Then other things can take their course later. That way then you maintain, you retain the what? The, the confidence of the members that nothing gets lost. Because many times what happens is if I, if I am caught, I am taken there and I am jailed. But what about the money that I took from the cooperative? Does it go back to the cooperative? No. It has gone and gone forever. The members have lost.